are receptors on breast cancer cells, which are coded by HER2 gene. And these, normally the HER2 receptors control uh, the growth of breast cells, how they divide and repair. However, among some breast cancers due to HER2 gene amplification, HER2 protein overexpression is observed in breast cancers. So this over, as I said, this overexpression causes the cells to grow more and divide in an uncontrollable manner. HER2 status of breast cancers is studied for the management and for the treatment. And it's being found that nearly 10 to 25% of breast cancers, they are, over, they are having HER2 overexpression. This HER2 status determination is normally done by immunohistochemistry. And this immunohistochemistry score of 0 to 1 is considered as negative and plus 2 as equivocal and 3 plus as overexpressed. The impact on hormones, the sex hormones and HER2 status is not much studied or not much reported. And estrogen is found to downregulate the HER2 gene. However, no data, is, no data is available on serum progesterone or testosterone concentrations with the association with HER2 status. So the objectives of our study were to assess the serum sex hormone concentrations, that's uh, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone concentrations, and HER2 status of uh, postmenopausal breast cancer patients, and to see the possible associations between these parameters. Moving on to the methodology, this is a cross-sectional descriptive study comprised of 75 postmenopausal breast cancer patients selected from National Cancer Institute Maharagama since 2013. Uh, the patients were newly diagnosed, those who have not underwent treatment for the breast cancer, and they were postmenopausal, and those who consent to participate were chosen. Serum sex hormones, testosterone, and progesterone concentrations were measured using a Minividas immunoanalyzer. And the HER2 status was obtained from their histopathology reports. The statistical analysis was done using SPSS, and ethical approval for the study was obtained from Ethics Review Committee, Faculty of Medical Sciences, University of Sri Jayadanpura. Moving on to the results, as you all can see, progesterone, testosterone, and estrogen all showed a skewed distribution. So we used non-parametric tests for the analysis. So looking at the median values of te testosterone, it was uh, closer to the lower reference range. And estrogen also, a similar observation. Progesterone also, the median value was 0.26 nanograms per milliliter. Looking at the distribution again, 60% uh, of the postmenopausal patients had the estrogen within the uh, normal range, but 9% had it elevated. Uh, considering total, 87% had below the half of the recommended upper value. And progesterone, 22% showed the elevation. Uh, testosterone, none of the patients had testosterone above the recommended upper limit but majority having half of the recommended values. Moving on to the HER2 status, nearly 55% of the study population were HER2 negative, and 35% were having moderate HER2 expression, and HER2 expression was observed in 10% of the population. Moving on to see if the sex hormone concentrations varies with the HER2 expression, Progesterone concentration showed to be significantly different according to the HER2 expression. However, testosterone or estrogen did not show any significant difference according to the HER2 overexpression. And this uh, significance was negative and significant. Then we wanted to see if we can find out from which cutoff point the progesterone, uh, the HER2 overexpression over was observed. Uh, this is the ROC curve we observed. And uh, the test stat that statistics is 81% uh, accurate. That is, the area under the curve is 0.81. And um, the 
cutoff value is 0.25 with 76% sensitivity and point, sorry, point 0.66 specificity. So let me conclude my presentation. Among the studied population, studied postmenopausal breast cancer women, serum estrogen and testosterone was not good enough to predict the HER2 status, but among them, progesterone concentration was, since it was significantly different according to the HER2 expression, we could find 0.25 as a cutoff value in predicting the HER2 expression with 76% sensitivity and 66% specificity. Let me thank the, all, my pa all the patients who participated in the study, as well as the university grant for the financial support, and thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Can I ask you a uh, first question? Uh, globally, is there any proof of this uh, similar studies about the progesterone relationship? Oh, well, I couldn't find any couldn't data. So. Right. Well, actually, this is a part of an ongoing study where we study various biochemical markers and histopathological features with breast cancer development. Since this HER2 assessment is very costly and the, we, you need a pathologist and it takes time, uh, but this progesterone sex hormone analysis is like from serum and it's like very low cost. So we just wanted to see if we could see any relationship. That's why. And did you assess the ERPR status of uh, these tumors as well? Yes. We, are, we have already assessed them as well. And, and is there any, any, any correlation with the ERPR status? Uh, with with the, the sex hormones? Yes. I'm currently doing the analysis. As far as I remember, I couldn't find much, but I'm sorry, I, I kind of think so. Now, uh, excuse me. Now, this, uh, this, this group of people, any information about the hormonal manipulation these people have undergone? As a, as a therapeutic measure? So these are newly diagnosed patients, so they have no. not underwent treatment, and these are postmenopausal without hormone replacement therapies. Thank you. Are there any more questions from the audience? In the absence of any uh, more questions, um, once again, uh, can we thank uh, you for the presentation?